In 2019, I will be the first All Elite Wrestling Champion. Everyone trusted me to make a statement on that first show. I felt that I was on another level, something that couldn't be stopped, but it wasn't good enough. The Young Bucks versus Lucha Bros, no question about it. Chicago All Out! Is one of our greatest rivalries ever. There's gotta be a reason that Sean Spears tore Cody Rhodes' head off. Cody crossed the line. He's changed. I know what makes the Rhodes family tick. That blood that I saw pooling out of the back of his head may as well have been a mirror into your future. He wanted to know what it was like to live a month in the life of Kenny Omega's shoot. He wanted to know what it was like to be like me, to be called the best in the world. What happened, John? Deep down, I love it when you hate me. You both! There's no real way to prepare for a match like this. Battle! They're calling this match the Escalera de la Morte, which is stairway to death. This is their style of ladder match. Because we are the best tag team of the universe! You can say what you want, you'll never be mine! When the stakes are the highest, the Young Bucks prevail. Somebody's going to be crowned the new AEW World Champion. We knew he was going to be here. Shoot us a fact! Just give me a thank you, AEW. Thank you for making me feel for the first time in months that I truly had to fight. Thank you for making me feel alive. I am going to prove that the hangman is nothing more than a little bitch. The only thing that stands between me and being the first All Elite Wrestling World Champion is a little bit of blood. There is not a damn thing I would not do to make sure that on September the 1st, when I look in the mirror, I see the champion. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the sold-out Sears Center Arena in Chicago, Illinois, where tonight, exclusively on pay-per-view, we bring you all out. I'm Jim Ross, Excalibur, the Golden Warrior here. Gentlemen, we have picked a great night to band together one more time. This is going to be one hell of a ride, fellas. A very, very memorable evening. And we will see the second half of the match that will determine the first ever AEW Women's World Champion. Crowned here tonight, well not here, not crowned here tonight, but as Riho and Hikaru Shida will face off here tonight to determine the woman that will go on to face Nyla Rose, Washington DC, October 2nd, to determine then the AEW Women's World Champion. Huge matchup indeed, but the best friends versus the Dark Order, and the winner gets first round by in the AEW Tag Team Tournament. This is a very important matchup for these two teams. Something's got to give because both these men need a huge victory here tonight. Can Kenny Omega get out of his alleged pump and have the match of his AEW career against the returning Hawk? Hawk is hungry. He wants, he thinks he needs a break. He's earned a break. He'll get it tonight. And Sean Spears, after that chair shot, heard around the world, bloodying the head of Cody and enlisting the help of Tully Blanchard, a man that knows how to defeat the Rhodes family. This is personal. And then premier tag team competition, the AEW Styles, the Escalera de la Muerte, Young Bucks versus the Lucha Brothers one more time for the Triple A World Tag Team Championship. That's going to be a great match. I love a ladder match, ladies and gentlemen, in our main event. Didn't close the show any other way. It's to crown the very first AEW World Champion, Jericho Hangman. I have my money. My heart's on Hangman. My money's on Jericho as we take you up to the ring. SCU! Well, this is 
exciting way to kick off this uh, amazing pay-per-view lineup. And again, thank you so much for inviting us, the AEW family, into your home. We appreciate your support. And I promise you that we're not going to disappoint you, especially this lineup tonight. And this opener. This opener, three men I know extremely well. Frankie Kazarian, Romeo Sky, Christopher Daniels. They are undefeated in trio competition. I mean, they've only had one match here, but they faced a hell of a team at Double or Nothing when they took on Stronghearts, Shima, El Lindemann, and T-Hawk, and they won in decisive fashion. All the more, I'm glad you're back with us on your second time with us this our group, and we're glad to see you again. Yeah, that's right. It's a pleasure. I get to commentate the best esports in the world. Now I get to commentate the best wrestling in the world. Despite it being Northern Illinois, no shortage of SCU fans here in Chicago. For a moment, I thought I was in Southern California. Did you feel that? Fifty-two pounds, Marco Stump, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus, a small boy, a boy, and his dinosaur! The boys and their dinosaur, the Jurassic Express, whatever you want to call them, they are three of the hottest up-and-comers here in all elite wrestling, and they are all looking for their first victory. You know, one of the great things about wrestling fans, they don't Mixed words, they tell you what they like, they tell you right away, more often than not. Yep. Since day one, this trio we just saw introduced have been extremely popular everywhere we've been. Yeah, and everywhere they go as well. They love the Jurassic Express, and for due reason, because this team not only brings the hype, but they bring it in the ring. Well, the team of Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus actually came together about 10 years ago when they both started training in Southern California. Marco Stunt, uh, a recent acquisition to their coterie, as they saw him getting bullied backstage in Jacksonville. And Luchasaurus, the biggest man in most rooms that he walked into, 
walks into, stepped in and protected Marco's stunt, adding him to his, uh, his group. And so I would say, despite the imposing size of Luchasaurus, SCU still with a size advantage. Yeah, and the thing about the also that experience advantage, you know what, if you get if Jungle Jack Perry there gets isolated or Marco Stunt, who by the way, I looked at my info sheet, his weight is unknown. <laughs> That actually will work out to his advantage, I would say. But look at this crowd, man, on their feet for Jungle Boy. And then the veteran, Frankie Kazarian, right in the middle of that ring. This is a, a tale of generations almost. Kazarian's been at this for such a long time. We go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Jungle Boy here. This is the best way we can think of to start all out. And boy, this is already, I'm excited. This is a one-fall match, ladies and gentlemen, 20-minute time limit. JR, you mentioned the experience advantage for SCU, a collective 64 years of combined experience for them, 16 and a half years for a boy, a boy, and their dinosaur. So, SCU, well, but there we see Jungle Boy pulling almost a uh, Mahi Straw there from Kazarian, trading pins. Referee Rick Knox right on the spot. Two count, or one count for Jungle Boy, Kazarian kicked out. Grabs the leg, rolls through, captures the shoulders. There was no shoulders really at all, quite frankly. Yeah. There was no pinning predicament. And I think that Frank Gazarian knew that full well. He's proving a point that he can take down Jungle Jack there anytime he wants. Yeah, Jungle Boy's speed, Pure perhaps one of his greatest assets, as well as his uh, boyish good looks. Indeed it is. Kazarian. Not sleep though on Kazarian. Yeah, I mean, back in, oh, Soulbutt there to the midsection, knee lift, and Lariat combination. Kazarian's got untapped talent in my estimation, even though he's a seasoned, talented, highly skilled veteran. His best days in the ring, in my, my view, from what I've observed, are yet to come. Yeah, we've seen a lot of impressive tag team action from SCU, both in trios nice and work. Combination, STO there from Christopher Daniels, the doctor. A really good teamwork, seamlessly getting Using their, their five count to their advantage was uh, SCU. Smart teamwork. That's why I think they're going to win this match simply because of their experience. It's that, yeah, it, it is that experience. They've been teaming together, Kazarian and Daniels, for such a long time. It is no surprise they're going to bust everything out of the woodwork hill to win oh, and all out. Nice Hurricane Rana. Step up Hurricane Rana there by Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy charging across the ring. Bipasso there by Daniels. Jungle Boy goes up to the top, blocks the wild right hand from Daniels, chopped to the chest. Now Jungle Boy spring up to the top. Arabian style arm drag taking Daniels across the ring. Drop kick from Jungle Boy takes Daniels off his feet. And now making eyes at his dinosaur in the corner. The big man seeing his first action of the evening. This could be a difference maker right here. And because Kazarian, uh, SCU didn't have the didn't have the advantage on, uh, on the little guy long enough to put him away. Now the biggest man in the match is in there with a lateral press. Only a one count as Daniel was able to kick out almost immediately. But Luchasaurus, as you mentioned, his size is imposing, but his kicks and his knees, his martial arts style attacks are perhaps his greatest asset. He hits that tail whip, that, that hook kick, that reverse hook kick from out of nowhere in that falling slam. And that's what's so impressive about Luchasaurus, because not only does he bring that strength, he brings the speed. That's a scary combination. But speaking of speed, you got Marco Stunt entering the ring now. Weight unknown, pound unknown, Huracan unknown. Nailed that one. Assistant Huracan Rana followed up by the charging drop kick. Catching that little guy, we were like trying to pour smoke through a keyhole. Almost impossible. Uh, you know, I. It's like I, I left Fortnite, now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Work on Rana there by Marco Stunt, the pride of Olive Branch, Mississippi. Now double Irish whip on Kazarian into the corner. Kazarian goes over the top to the outside. I think he tried to land on the apron, but couldn't get his footing. Keep your eye on Jungle Jack Perry. Keep your eye on Marco, Marco Stunt. Stunt. Tope suicide onto Daniels. Daniels, I believe the back of the oh! head. Oh! <laughs> and the hit says keep on flying. Jungle Boy blindsiding the other two members of SCU. No way. As Luchasaurus standing tall, center of no the way. ring. Uh, give him a shot, kid. No way. Oh, oh my God. God. Luchasaurus. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> That's athleticism for a monster. 
Well, that could be a that could be a major face in the long-term future of AEW. His name, Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus bringing the most experienced member of the opposition, Christopher Daniels, back into the ring underneath the bottom rope with Marco Stunt looking to climb up on the shoulders. An assisted tag team attack as Stunt diving body press off the shoulders of Luchasaurus. One, two, no. The issue I have with this strategy is the smallest man in a match, maybe in their building, was legal for a few seconds. You want the big guy in there to be legal, care to do the heavy lifting. Or jungle jackal. You're going to need more mass in order to pin, the, pin, pin their opponent as well. That's the problem here, right? If it's going to be Marco Stunt, at this point, it's very easy for him to just be able to lift him right up. We still don't know what he weighs. It's a matter of doing the math. Uh, Jungle Boy, though, what he lacks in mass, he makes up for in height. He's got a good stature. He cuts a good figure, but he's like a he's like a young NBA rookie that needs to put on size as Scorpio Sky comes into the ring. Anyway, so goes under. See there, right there's a good point. Scorpio Sky overpowered Jungle Jack there, but yep. he's got more mass, more body weight. There's a blind tag mate. Ducks under the back elbow and Kazarian oh. there with the leg lariat as Jungle Boy was coming over the back of Scorpio Sky as he went for the trip. But yeah, as Jungle Boy puts on size, adds mass, he will become a force to be reckoned with. I mean, he already is here at AEW, but even more so. He's been very impressive every time I've seen him. He's getting better every time I see him. That's a great direction to travel in. He you know, is amazingly me. gifted athletic. Every time it's Scorpio Sky, this man gets in the ring and he, he just pulls magic out of a hat each and every time, JR. The talent that this man possesses is unreal. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. I agree. Tremendous, tremendous vertical lead. This is a six-man tag team matchup we mentioned earlier, one fall 20. But any of these six guys could very easily have a very successful singles career right here at AB AEW. They're that good. Their skills are that refined. It's speaking, though, about the six-man tag. And what we're seeing out of SCU, it's very clinically done, right? They are preventing Jungle Boy being able to get to the other side, cutting the ring away, and they're getting those quick tags in. So that this way, their teammates can get the rest. They go in for the attack, tag, going for the attack, tag. It's so good. This has settled down to be a very uh, deliberate six-man tag team matchup with the pace being controlled by SCU, which is a good thing for them. They went for the double hip toss. They catch oh. it to the sit-out powerbomb neckbreaker combination. The cover comes, bar leg hook, shoulders down and a near fall. Counted by referee Rick Knox. Yeah, Knox, one of the best in the business, even-handed, steady, and but right now being distracted by Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus doing oh. his partner, Jungle Boy, a disservice. Daniels comes in over the top, lifted over the top. Enzi Gary, sweep of the leg out by both other members. SCU Kazari with that truck. That can do it. That can do it right there. SCU in the driver's seat. The veterans, the veteran team in control, as we saw another near fall there. That's the difference that uh, 32 and a half of years of combined yeah, experience right. makes. The other thing about that is Excalibur is that right now, uh, SCU's isolated somebody other than Luchasaurus. Yeah, that's true. When Luchasaurus, if he does get the tag, he will be fresh and he will have a chip on his shoulder. He'll be looking to inflict some punishment. It's going to be about whether or not Jungle Boy can make his way to the other side of the Court. ring. Nice close line. Under, got uh, some, some leverage underneath the Jungle Boy. Yeah, he was firing upward with that close line to take Daniels off his feet to rattle him. And he put himself in position to reach that long arm of Luchasaurus and he makes the tag. Well, that was very. Uh, Oh. Unsound strategy to allow that to happen. You just can't allow the big guy to get back in the ring no matter what you got to do. Look at Luchasaurus single-handedly or single-footedly dismantling SCU. Big, strong, oh, six, 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 eight, kick. whatever he is. Oh. Long legs are strong. That's his leaping ability. We saw that earlier. He's got great strength, great impact with his legs. Christopher Daniels has no idea where he is right now. Now at the shoulders of Luchasaurus. Kazarian saves Daniels out the back door there. Now double teaming the big guy. <laughs> Athletic. Luchasaurus it. ducks under the clothes. Yeah. Up to his feet. Ooh. Tail whip. Oh. Takes the Daniels roundhouse kick. Catch it with the goozle. Chow oh. slam. Dumb. What a chow oh. slam. Oh. 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 oh my God, I can't believe it. This crowd was so ready, so ready for the one, two, three right there.
and somehow, some way, we saw the kick out. Single handedly taking out one of the most experienced teams in AEW, in SCU. Unbelievable from Luchasaurus. SCU with their over 64 years of combined experience. And Luchasaurus with some educated feetsies taking the fight right to him. Casadora. Over the shoulder. Not good. Oh, look at this. Spinning him around. Hit to the DDT. And Jungle Boy with the tope as well. Marco Stunt covers. Hook of the leg. Two Rock down. Up there. Kazarian. And right there, you want Luchasaurus to be looking for any opposition that could get in the ring. That was an unfortunate circumstance there. But Christopher Daniels caught off guard. Daniels looking to recruit oh. Kazarian to come help him. Now both, both men hooked up. Sky kicked oh, off with that butt. teep. Ten minutes gone by, ten remain. Luchasaurus just said, oh, the Jungle Boy, he's got his hands full of me like. Oh, but Daniels had that move scouted, that, that assisted power bomb that they, uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus like to use. And a celebrity rehab there by SCU! A three-man maneuver on the, big, oh. on the biggest man in the match. I guess that's what it takes. Jungle oh. Boy guillotined over the middle rope by Kazarian. Now all three members of Jurassic Express on the outside. Kazarian with the over the top hook on Rana takes out Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt. Luchasaurus just tied the two of his own men inadvertently, obviously. But now there's a bigger disadvantage. Advantage is the sky. Oh! Ice water in his veins coming over the top with the tope. Con, hello. And now Jungle Boy rolled into the ring. He has been isolated by, no, actually, Marco Stunt in the ring. They're looking Long maybe for the BME. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. no. Are you kidding? Daniels, best melt ever! Kazarian clears out Jungle Boy. One, two, three, and that is it. Academic from there. SCU with a SCU. tremendous victory. No end for this match. You. Not a popular decision with a sold out crowd here tonight. We like the Jurassic Express a great deal, and for many good reasons. But SCU going now 2 and 0 in trios competition here in All Elite Wrestling. I simply don't know who can stop them. When all three of them are together, they are dynamite. They are incredible, and they are scary for anyone else in that locker room that wants to go up against the three of them. They are firing on all cylinders, but they are uh, actually showing a good bit of sportsmanship here. Checking out Marco Stunt and Jungle Boy. After that BME, that finisher that put both Jungle Boy and Stunt on the ground of their heads. Here we see a handshake, great sportsmanship. Refreshing to see occasionally. And as you mentioned, JR, Jungle Boy has an extremely bright future. Yeah. But right now, Luchasaurus, he very well could be the president of AEW if he decided to break off of the singles competition. Jurassic Express. Thus far, winless here in AEW. Take a little look at some of the uh, highlights of our opening match here tonight. A lot of flying, a lot of high impact, a lot of risks being taken. And some fun being had. Maybe a little too much. That might have been what caused their ass to dress express. This moment right here, I could not believe the dinosaur went to the sky. I didn't think that that was possible. But hey, man, 2019, anything's possible. And for as impressive as Luchasaurus was, you see here the strength, the agility, just completely on display. It was the experience, it was the maturity of SCU that allowed them to come away with the victory here tonight in the opening contest on All Out. Well, the trio of offense, just for too much for Jungle Jack to overcome, but I'll tell you, there'll be other days you're looking at some an amazing attraction that here are these three guys that we see growing before our very eyes. I remember when this company first started, I saw men calling for change. One man in particular called for a paradigm shift.
I'm the guy who's gonna be leading this company for the next 25 years. John Moxley, I am challenging you for your world title. I'll see you at All Out, John. All Elite Wrestling presents All Live, live Saturday, September 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on pay-per-view. I would like to be heard. I'd like to feel included. I'd like to feel respected. I would love a sense of community. I'd like to be taken seriously. I'd like to just be myself. I want to know that I matter, that my thoughts, my perspective, my ideas, my creativity, my happiness, I want to know that it matters. I'd like to do more than just watch. I'd like to actually contribute. I'd like to be part of a movement. I'd like for everyone to feel confident in their own heels. And if Pat can take advantage, but I think Kenny Omega is the wrestler of the year. That doesn't go away that easily. And his opponent from Newcastle upon Tyne, England, weighing 206 pounds, he is a Bastard! Pah! Well, this is going to be a very interesting match of psychology and mental chess. That's right. I think that what makes this match so important for Kenny Omega is that he needs to keep himself focused. Because this man right here is coming in laser focused on the task at hand. He was told he's coming into this match. He needed to get that win. This is the moment he was looking for. Pack has arrived at AEW. Taking this match with only 10 days notice. But that is 10 straight days that Pack was watching Kenny Omega matches, that he was preparing for this bout with the former best bout machine, or I guess current best bout machine, but Pac fancies himself as a best bout machine. These two men traveled very similar paths. Kenny Omega coming up in New Japan Pro Wrestling, Pac coming up in Dragon Gate. Both men, rivals of Prince Devitt, but they have never faced off before, either in tag team or singles competition. That's why this match is so important. Well, the, both men. the thing about this is that Omega was a golden boy at New, in New Japan. He was the biggest star they had for a long time. Hence, wrestler of the year on many polls. That's right. But now, 
the other side of the coin is, what's it like to be like Pac, who is, he's still looking for respectability. He's still looking to be recognized. He's looking for respect about bottom line. That makes him very scary, JR. Because he's looking for that respect, is he willing to do anything to gain it? Anything to rip it away from these fans? But now we're about to find out here. Pack Kenny Omega, this is what it's all about. One fall 30, ladies and gentlemen. Here from Chicago. Again, thanks for being with us. So much more great action, more main events still to come here. Referee Paul Turner drawn the duties for this matchup as Kenny Omega and Pac pacing around the ring. I mentioned their paths in Japan. Pac was undefeated for two years, 664 days until losing the Open the Dream Gate title earlier this year. And now he is refocused his attention on professional wrestling and what a feather in his cap. What a way to start off a new undefeated streak than by defeating Kenny Omega. Well, the kid wants to be recognized. He wants to be respected. And right. he's, he's got a great skill set, as you will see here. He's been called many things. The man gravity forgot, et cetera, et cetera. He's a unique personality. He has multiple personalities in my estimation and a little bit unraveled at times. And Kenny Omega, some showboating here against Pac. Could Omega, in his craziest, this may be a stupid question. This is to you, okay? Could he be overlooking this kid? I don't think so. I think Kenny Omega is one of the smartest wrestlers in the business, and he's trying to upset Pac. He's trying to play into those, uh, those doubts that Pac has of being underutilized for so long, of being overlooked for so long, and he's trying to make Pac think that he's being overlooked by Kenny Omega himself. It's a psychological game of chess by Kenny Omega. Pac. Nice nightmare counter, single leg pickup. This is a kid, I say the kid, Pac's a 33. He's uh, quicker than a hiccup, folks. So athletic. Amazing, amazing balance. So don't let the, uh, the, the cover describe the book. He, is, he can beat anybody at any time in a variety of ways. He has the most tremendous equilibrium of any performer I've ever seen. The way he is able to fly, the way he is able to keep his focus on his opponent through a multiple rotation tornado, a Cancun tornado, whatever it may be. It's almost like this man makes up things in the sky as Something he goes. The, the eye of Omega's problematic, fellas. Can't overlook that fact. That he, the one eye man has a no oh. chance in these matches, I can tell you. Omega with that basement drop kick. A little sense of urgency here by Omega. He may be hurting more than we think. Over the top. No! Oh. Oh. Went for the coach. Charles Crusher. Pack had it scouted. And I love the, I love the, uh, the, the verbal. Trash talk. Whoa, oh, monkey flip taking him over the top. Pack retreats to the outside. Kenny Omega. And look, this, no, when you're on the outside, it certainly doesn't mean you're in the safe zone. Definitely not. Kenny Omega, well known for taking to the skies. The crowd here, the sold out Sears Center Arena, fully behind. Kenny Omega, he hits the ropes. Pack slides in, though. Took a little too much time on that one. Allow Pack to get back into this. Step up, work on Rana now. I, Omega sent to the outside. That was bad strategy by Omega. Spent Absolutely way too much time. Yeah, he's not thinking here. Come on. Now Omega comes in the ring. Pack goes underneath. Shot to the midsection. Bandera up and over the top. Pack lands on his feet though on the outside. The balance we talked about. The agility and the balance. Omega. No. No. Oh. Over the top with the Piscato. But Pack counters with the anti-air. Omega might as well have put a neon sign on his back. Then I'm going to do a cross body over the top. He went. All those dudes on the front row wearing those black t-shirts saw that. He went for that plancha, but Pac hit him with that rising upward kick. Just a punt to the chest, but Pac sent into the barricade here at ringside. That's more like Kenny Omega. Desperation counter. Absolutely, and, and very physical, and then his ability to follow up. Kenny Omega's one of the most intelligent, cerebral wrestlers I have ever been around in my, in my entire career. I've had the privilege of calling some of his great matches. The, the three with Okada, for example. And he's a phenomenon. But sometimes you just get out of your groove. You, you got to find your rhythm again. That's all I think this is. Finding Kenny's rhythm and getting his confidence back. Oh, now sending Pac Ooh. into the other barricade here at ringside. 
You know, as, as we mentioned, oh, at the top of the show, Pac, though, with the counter, the boot to the jaw of Omega. It seemed like Omega was focused exclusively on Moxley. Pac comes up, pop up. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Pac knew his, oh, Jeopardy, and slammed Omega the back of his head, colliding with the rim of that railing. You gotta wonder if today, when he got out of bed, the Kenny Omega was thinking more wrestling-wise about John Moxley than he was about Todd. It's very true, it's very true. And, and, and again, I hate to hark on it, but Moxley had just a completely different approach in the ring versus what he's going up here against Pac. Pac will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Omega with the speed, with the strength. He's capable of doing all of that stuff, and he'll take to the sky whenever he wants. Yeah, Moxley, much more grounded fighter. Used to love that, loves to use that brawling technique. Oh! And Omega sent into the barricade once again. Referee Paul Turner. No one can ever question Kenny Omega's toughness, his will to win and be great. You think he didn't like being voted the wrestler of the year of all his peers around the world? Here's the number one guy, folks. Oh, and a bunch of a bunch of polls online polls. Let's not forget that at Fight for the Fallen, when Kenny Omega went up against Shima, he took meteor after meteor after meteor. That showed the toughness, as you mentioned, JR, of Kenny Omega. Right now, Pac is recognizing early on that if he just keeps throwing Kenny at these metal railings, he's going to wear him down. He's going to have him right where he wants him. Or get disqualified if he's not careful. That's the thing about it. Yeah, this Paul Turner being very liberal Very here. liberal. I was going to say that. Good point. Very liberal because uh, there could have been a count-out situation yeah, a couple very, of times. Very much so. This is a dream match. Paul Turner doesn't want to have this end in a count-out. But, Goldie, you mentioned... Shima and Kenny Omega's match with him. Shima, a mentor of Pax. Oh, oh right in the face. Gone right in the face. Now, he goes for the cover right now, right here. He may have it. Talking about pot. That man is a bastard. Well, he's a dumb bastard. We're not making the cover. I can tell you that because that was one of the most dynamic drop kicks I've ever seen in my life. And, and Omega's just out wrestling around. It seems like Pac may be intent on punishing Omega and make an example of him. Are making a big point on global television. That's very true, JR. This is a massive opportunity for Pac. We're going to TNT very soon. This is what you want to see. Start things off and really put your stake in AEW. That kick was right over Omega's ear, which will screw this equilibrium. Not to withstanding the fact that that Irish fist is going to hurt, cover lateral press, and Omega reaching down with one leg and that one shoulder just off the canvas long enough to break the pinning uh, predicament. Not a very emphatic kick out there from Omega. He has endured quite a lot of punishment in a very short amount of time here as Pac looks to grind him out and those huge, huge arms. This, this thing, uh, Excalibur, is about control and the psychological edge. Pac is getting the psychological edge right now on Kenny Omega because he's controlling him. He has grounded Kenny Omega. The wrestler of the year has been grounded and taken off his pedestal by this little guy here. He's little. He's not little. He's a man. He's a man, but Omega using his his height advantage, his moment or his equal that, his leverage to get back up to his feet. Those elbows to the midsection of Pac oh. followed up with that knife edge chop. I've seen Omega use those knife edges. And let it go right to the Adam's apple. That's when business picks up. Omega coming in with that high boot across the jaw. Pack though, gets a wide base and sledgehammering the back of the head. The medulla oblong got him. You gotta be impressed with the resilience of Kenny Omega. Trying to stay in this oh. one. Followed it, followed it, popped right in. A lot of momentum. Close line up and over to the floor. Welcome, Pac. To AEW. This goes to show again the intelligence in that ring that Kenny Omega possesses. That's something that Omega probably would have done. Gone to the ropes, went in for a big hit. And Omega scouted that one perfectly. Now he's hit. looking for the opportunity here. Another big chance. It's all or nothing, simply for Omega. But he goes downstairs, the low baseball slide with a lot of power found his mark. And now Omega blocks. Tope Suicida. And Omega immediately comes up clutching the back of his head. And whether we lock the stylings or not, irrelevant. And it shows you the urgency that Kenny Omega now possesses to put this damn match away. But I think his, actually, I, I said knee, but it was his ankle. His ankle colliding with that top, the top of the barricade. You see it right there. The back of the head. I mean, that's a high-risk maneuver. 
That is the textbook definition of why it is such a roll of the dice. That's what Feast of Fame as a rule. Omega's up. He's sick of Yeah, he is. And that's also plays into his hand psychologically. in the ring. So we just, you know, the fans of Kenny Omega, which I count myself as one, quite frankly, and, and Pac, for that matter, you just want to see him get his edge back. He was so amazing to watch, and he had his full edge. by 20 remains. We are one-third of the way through the time limit of this match. Ten minutes have elapsed. And now Omega up to the top. Pac had his back. Oh, the back of the head. The back of the head. The missile drop kick. Front face lock. Oh, Fisherman Buster, center of the ring. Look at the leg. One, two. Now Pac kicks out. The near leg was hooked. Very sternly, for that matter, but just not enough. But Omega has fought his way again out of a big hole back into the fight. You gotta love that if you're a Kenny Omega fan. That's right. It's one of the things that everyone here in this building loves about Kenny Omega, the ability that he has to just pick himself right back up. That's why he has been regarded as the best bout machine in pro wrestling. Well, Nelson, but the, the ropes will cause a break. But not without some payment. Yeah, Omega keeping the attack on Pack. He's focused, he's looking for that Snapdragon suplex with the point of the elbow of Pack, catching Omega right on the nose. Omega though has a fireman's carry on Pack. Pack struggling. You can see bicycling those legs. Omega look at the hike up the green overalls. Nope, Pack had it scouted, shoves him off into the current corner. Back, Bandera up to the outside oh, elbow. Both men are trying so hard to get a sustained advantage, and they can't. Oh, Omega Connor. Omega, yeah, he's got one of his shoulders, and we've seen this before. Omega taking a moment to collect himself. Pack can't escape. And boy, that split second that Omega hesitated was all that Pack needed to move out of the way. So many times in this matchup, Kenny Omega has oh. taken that oh. one moment. Back out here. DDT! Oh. Good time, DDT. Spiked him. Wow. And again, so many times, Kenny Cover Omega. The press. No. no. Near fall, could have been over right there. He's taking time when he shouldn't be. He should be going on the attack. And you saw Pack wincing in pain. He does have that left thigh taped up quite a bit. It's interesting that Omega has not focused on that at all. That's usually the first thing people look for with a high flyer such as Pac. Pac sustained a severe injury in his left quadricep. A slashing injury on a faulty ring or something I was understanding. Maybe I'm wrong or something. It was a very nasty gash. You yeah. can see the white of the muscle. But now he's it's here. Not, yeah, it's not affecting Pac's mobility at all as he heads to the top quick as a cat. Maybe for the Black Arrow? No, Kenny just gets right out of the Smart. drop zone. Shows so Omega's awareness, but he's not in a safe zone. But Pack still up on, oh, look at this, Pack uh, changing position. Look at this. Pack changing position, Omega with his back turned. Oh! oh! Off the top, crashing down on Omega to the floor. Man, these guys taking amazing chances. High risk, but will there be a high reward? Will there be a payoff for that chancy investment? And we take another look at it. You can see Pack, that agility ball. Oh. Look at those ankles. Look at those shins crashing against the barricade. There isn't a lot of real estate there to work around in the outside. So when you go for those high risk maneuvers, you're going to pay for that dearly. And Pack clutching the leg now. Just as Omega came up clutching his leg earlier, Pack doing the same. Both men, no pun intended, on equal footing. Referee uh, judicious enough to allow these men to give him a chance to get back in the ring to continue this match. The question he has to ask himself, are they in a physical condition that they can defend themselves to some degree? If they're not, you've got to stop the match. Turner believes it to be true as Pac, oh, look at this, limping. So now you make mistakes when you're hurt. Yeah. And now you take more chances than you normally would when you're in pain. You look for those shortcuts. You look for the most expeditious end to the match as Pac taking a long time to get up to the top. He's looking for that black that, arrow. That wheel, that the right ankle's obviously problematic. Oh, 50 splash! That, one, that's it! Two, that's gotta be no! It's not it! Omega reaches down, resilient as he could be, and kicks out before the three. I just can't believe that Pack was able to go up to the top rope and hit a 450 effectively on one leg.
Madness, utter madness. He's an amazing athlete, this young man from the UK, I can tell you that. And I hope he's found a home here in AEW. Yeah. The world needs to see more of this young man, I can promise you. Think of what a victory here for Pac would do to the AEW World Championship title picture. Hangman Page, Chris Jericho later on tonight. They will be facing off and if Pac secured the victory that would put him immediately in the discussion of potential challengers. Both men back up to a vertical base. However Omega is spaghetti legged as we have said. It comes with a chop. Chop a little high on the chest, as you alluded to, Jr. Yeah, they get up there in that Adam's apple area. And everything, your attitude changes immensely. Really, two minutes change. I gotta think Omega's got the advantage in this exchange. A little taller, a little heavier. Omega definitely has uh, slugged it out with some of the best Ooh. strikers in the world. Ooh. Hawk is taking every bit of it, and Omega keeps dishing it out yeah, with no surcease. Or Restructuring of his offense. Pac just eating shot after shot. Those boxing elbow strikes. Pac on roller skates. But oh! oh. Fires in with elbows of his own. Three big time elbow shots. The point of Pac's elbow catching Kenny Omega right on the temple. Oh, oh my team. God. What an impact. Right in the Omega. Eyes wide open. Omega. Oh! Up the bomb. Omega's tossing. Hawk around like a lard dog. Beautiful spot buster. One, two, no! Boy, it's really hard to get that final three when you're not covering your shoulders. Had Omega pulled in his ankles, had he collected his legs over Pac's shoulders, he may have secured the three count. It certainly gives him a better chance than what we saw. He'll go back and look at this tape and realize exactly what that was all about. But in any event, Omega's battled back into a, I'd say, a, a lead in this matchup. It's been back and forth, through and through, from start of the bell all the way up until this uh -oh. point, fellas, but Kenny Omega's feeling it. He's signifying the end is near, I'm thinking. About to say goodbye and good night to Pac, but Paul Turner got pulled in by the bastard. And now Pac goes to the outside. Springboard in. Oh, oh. What a drop kick. That's a counter, folks. That's a counter the drop kick in midair. Nowhere for Pac to go but down. That'd be kicked in the face. He's got him up. He's got the legs crossed. Oh! Almost like Ushigarashi across the knee. And that's going to be to the back of the head. The target area that he's going to want. If he's going to bust out that one. The trigger. trigger. Well, ain't if he's going to bust out the V trigger. He's going to use it all the hell if he can. And look at Pac up there. Navigating pretty well with his shoulders. Oh, fighting his way out of it. Pac trying to fight his way out of this predicament. He's not in a good place up there. Oh, Kenny trying to counter into Kreutz. Oh, oh, one, two, no! Oh, Pac again kicks out. Pac the kick of the legs. That belly to belly suplex was perfectly nailed. It was perfect execution. But you're not talking about a, an easy mark here with Pac. That Kreutz wrath, center of the ring pack. It was all incumbent upon him to kick out, and he did so. But Kenny Omega. Pressing the attack, keeping focus on Pac. This is exactly what he needs to do. We saw a couple mental errors, but Omega now back in the driver's seat. Well, Omega's got to close the deal, quite frankly. He's looking for the Tiger Driver 98. Yes. Pac, 90, sure it's 98. All right. okay. I can't goddamn to you. <laughs> <laughs> I kidding you. And again, right away, it's just Pac. Yeah, Omega, look, Omega's in a bad, bad way here, folks. He's, He's trying to fight through this with a, with a poker face, but there's something wrong here that hit. Yeah, could have been on that, that Tope Suicida over the top. When his ankle collided with it, he, he might have like a stinger running through his leg all the way up the IT band. Get it! Back over the top! Oh! Man, what a cutter. Out of, out of, the proverbial out of nowhere cutter. Yeah, lightning quick there by the bastard. Waist lock applied. Back. Oh. German suplex Omega, though, flipped out of it. He tried to get all the way over, almost evaded. Oh, oh my God, what a Just what a snap, suplex. snap, German suplex and pack. With all that momentum coming off the ropes as well. The deadlift, strength. the deadlift. Oh. Everest style German suplex. No. no. Close, Omega so close. I don't even think he kicked out. I think he just fell over. But it was enough to break the pinfall attempt. 
again Welcome. and again. This match has just been unbelievable. But most importantly, you never know who's going to take that lead. It, at, one mo at one moment, it's Kenny Omega in full control. And then Pac out of nowhere. She got a good shot of uh, Pac's chest. As the blood has rushed to the surface. It is beat red with those chops. And Already bruised. Gone by 10 Very high on the chest. It ain't ballet. It's good close to that Adam's apple. You get Harford on that. And now Pac with Kenny Omega in the corner, hoisting him up to the top rope. Pac could be thinking work on Rana Avalanche style. I got to think one of these guys have got to figure out a way to get a submission, stay on the mat, out Matt wrestle somebody instead of taking every chance. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, sometimes things like that happen. The bottom falls out. Omega just coming out underneath Pac, driving him face first after that top turnbuckle. One more time for Omega to regroup. How many one more times did they have him in this match before he can put Pac away? There it is. Oh, one of the most devastating maneuvers in all of wrestling. That Snapdragon suplex. Amazing. Omega feeling it. Oh, V-trigger! Right in the, the side of the head. And now the near leg hook, shoulders are down. Man, how close was that? How close was that? Good grief. Credit to Paul Turner there for turning away from it right as he saw Pac's shoulder go up. And I'm a little shocked here. He had him with the V trigger. That could have been a prime opportunity to bust out that one wing and Angel put this one to bed. Instead, he's going back to the well, looking for another V trigger. Pac, though, catches, Locked. counters. Locked. It's blocked by Pac. Saw that coming, blocked it, not oh. done. The soul butt to the midsection. Yeah, man, the soul reflexes, let me tell you, that takes the air right out of you. You know, Omega. Oh, went for the step up, Gaman Geary. Kenny ducked it, though. Omega looks like he's. Kenny going back to the well again for the V trigger. Pac's already blocked it once. Oh! Boot right to the face. By the flexible, oh. athletic, and powerful Pac. Pac knows that he's going to keep going for that. Oh! Hear that one. Well, I guess he didn't see that one coming. Omega now has regained the lead. Pack ducks under. Pace, Both men duck under. There's Quickens. Oh, catch him right under the jaw. Kenny Omega needs to put Pack away now with alacrity. Behind goes for the poison Rana. Pack escapes. Poison Rana. Oh. Kenny Get Omega rolled both, through, no. Both men are per perspiring profusely. They're both slick. It wasn't clean, but Kenny seemed to catch the worst of it, Pack with an elbow strike. Hey, both these guys are in bad shape. I just gotta tell you, they know it's a 30 minute time limit. Yeah, this is a this is a race against the clock at this point. Tonight's arresting mortality. Look, it's looking them right in the eye as the clock continues to run. Those knife edge chops, losing some pepper there. Oh. That knee though, certainly had a lot of it. Boy, they, now they're going back to the, getting off the top turnbuckle, trying everything that they could think of to become even more ground oriented. As soon as I say that, then Omega, o yeah. Omega elevates Pac. Looking for that one winged angel. Can't blame me for that. Pac, though, very yeah. low on the back. He's in a fireman's carry. And look at this. Oh, the, oh, he's got him hooked in. He's got him hooked in for the brutalizer. The bastard has the brutalizer locked in on a standing Kenny Omega. Omega to tap. It's a submission. Omega being stretched by Pac. Oh, oh, look at the pressure. Oh, Kenny Omega Lord. is fading. He is fading. Omega's eyes are closed. The brutalizer locked in. Pac. On the shoulders down. No. Oh, oh, he put him to Done. sleep. What? Pac with the brutalizer. The bastard put away the best bout machine. Fans cannot believe it. The winner of this match. That Omega. Had to, the match had to be stopped. He couldn't defend himself. It was a, a His a eyes were literally yeah. rolling in the back the of referee, his head. The referee made the only call, folks, that he could make. There's something, some are booing here. You may not like it, but the safety of the, of the athlete is first and foremost any and every time. And what a tremendous counter to that one-winged angel, that brutalizer. He hit it from the shoulders on a standing opponent. Usually it's a more ground-based move, but Pac, Catching Kenny Omega, and Omega making a lot of mistakes that he does not usually make tonight. How many times did he have him right where he wanted him?
so many times, and he just could not put it away. Pack picks up a massive victory here at All Out. Both these main event talents showed a, an amazing amount of resiliency and toughness. How many times did they find themselves in a hole and fight their way back out of to gain a, an advantage, but just couldn't close the deal every time? That's great counter wrestling, and two guys are in amazing condition. And Kenny Omega now just rousing. He was asleep, and if I had to guess, he's probably dreaming of John Moxley. He underestimated Pac JR. I thought I had a lot of faith in the psychological prowess of Kenny Omega and his ability to, to get under the skin of Pac, but it seems like he was, he really was underestimating, like you said. Well, it seems like, based on what I've seen tonight, what I've heard before tonight, that uh, the Kenny Omega Moxie thing is far from over, it would appear to me, I'm just speculating, and that uh, Omega's not gonna be content until he gets his hands on Moxley and settles the score. Now, Pack here in AEW with a perfect record, a 1-0 mark, Kenny Omega. Now with two losses to his credit, we see that beautiful basement drop kick, vintage Kenny Omega, but... Uh, Kenny had some great moments here tonight. Yeah. He looked there like his old self, but he got great athleticism. But not many athletes can do that. Well, see, that's the thing, Kenny Omega usually goes for that Kotaro Crusher later in the match. He was making some small psychological oh. errors, but Pack. Strike hard, strike first, no mercy. And then Omega would get an advantage, his score, but he couldn't follow up. So, he was just... Now right here. Right. Should have been a fitting predicament. He should have won the match. But, look at the resilience here. Boom. You know, great match, folks. You saw, this has been a great one. And it's just the way that Pac was able to come back into this one time and time again. And one could say that perhaps Kenny Omega allowed him those opportunities to get back into this. But Pac, how talented, how good he is in that ring cannot be questioned. And even though Kenny Omega was dishing all the punishment necessary to Pac, Pac with this right here, the Brutalizer. Putting put Kenny, Kenny to Omega sleep. to sleep. How many men can say that? How many men can say that they put Kenny Omega to sleep? Pack the Bastard is one of those men. A hell of a wrestling match, folks. Kenny Omega still looking for his wrestling heart in AEW. The event that started it all. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a super card here. Has become the most anticipated pay-per-view of the year. Unbelievable! On Saturday, September 5th, the greatest champions in the sport today Whoa! will face the next generation of contenders. The biggest card of the year, without a doubt. All the Elite Wrestling presents All Live, live Saturday, September 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on pay-per-view. Now kids, big and small, can relive their favorite AEW moments at home with the brand new Unrivaled Collection by Jazzware. The best bell machine has arrived. Big Trigger! AEW Unrivaled, available now exclusively at Walmart. Well, this is gonna be a, a, a major departure from what we've just seen. Yeah, this is three men cut from the same cloth, men that relish pain, and Alex, they are going to have a Cracker Barrel Clash. That's right, folks, the Cracker Barrel Clash. I'm excited. This bout set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit is the Cracker Barrel Clash. Approaching the ring first from Seattle, Washington, weighing 173 pounds, Darby Allen. Well, JR, Darby Allen is a young man that you got your first look at in Daytona Beach, Florida, yeah. when he went to that 20 minute time limit draw with Cody. Shocked a lot of people. Shocked a lot of people. Up there. Cody included. Yeah. But he was also a man that was upstaged by Sean Spears, and that is the impetus for this match. They met a couple weeks later, the fight for the Fallen. He teamed with Jimmy Havoc and Joey Janela, but his sole focus was on getting revenge on Sean Spears for upstaging Darby's moment. Very unique young man with a very compelling last story. Cracker Barrel Challenge. I'm getting hungry. Look at 
JR likes fried chicken. Approaching the ring next from Camden Town in Just London, that. England. Weighing 14 stone, Jimmy Havoc. Macabre Jimmy Havoc. That's he has no fear man. either, man. That's a scary man, fellas. Jimmy Havoc. Look at those eyes. AEW fans got their first look of him at the uh, Casino Battle Royale at Double or Nothing on May 25th. And in that match, he stapled a lit cigarette to the forehead of Joey Janela. Joey Janela has not forgotten about that. Now that is classic catch as catch can rest. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you cannot unsee, and uh, that, <laughs> that was one of them. This sure. guy's a special talent, let me tell you something. Never Jim. saw a chance he wouldn't take. I'm a bad, bad. And the third and final participant from Asbury Park, New Jersey, weighing 202 pounds, is the bad boy, Joey Junella. Well, a man that pairs perfectly with his opponents, a man that is willing to push any and all boundaries. We saw him in that unsanctioned match with John Moxley. We saw the risks that he was willing to take. All three of these men are more than happy to put their personal safety, their personal well-being aside in pursuit of a victory. It just, I guess it's a, it's a, it's a match of whose body fails them first. First man to score ten faller submission wins the match. So it's a one faller. And Goldie, I think this will be a memorable match. Indeed it will. We also want to thank Cracker Barrel for sponsoring the Cracker Barrel Clash. We also want to let everyone know that as of August 26, Cracker Barrel Sunday Homestyle Chicken is now served every day. I'm there. You and me both. Buddy. I think old JR has been to 100 Cracker Barrels his career. I could do a world tour of telling you about Cracker Barrel, man. <laughs> you and the Young Bucks, man. I love it. Cracker Barrel is actually providing the commemorative 50th good. anniversary barrel that is up at the top of the ramp. And it's good every single time you go. It's a glowing review there, Jared. Yeah, that's, that's, very very that's, that's, that's a hell of a live read. You should have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. It drops every Thursday. <laughs> Thank you very much. And it's called Grilling JR. Look at that. How about that? Amazing. What a segue. Now, here we go. Let's get back to business. Oh, I don't Jimmy know. Havoc immediately retreating to the outside. Is, is there going to be any uh, alliances, you think? I, uh, immediately going underneath the ring, pulling out a chair, multiple chairs. And now Havoc looking for something, looking for some plunder underneath the ring, pulling out a table now. In reference to the great Dusty Rose, a little plunder, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for doing that. And, oh, Havoc. No, no, no. The staple gun that affixed that cigarette to the forehead of Joey Janela at the Casino Battle Royale in the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Jimmy Havoc threatening. Oh, oh what? Whoa, oh, God, what are hell? you doing? What's wrong with this guy? Good Lord. He stapled hey, himself. Hey, ref, you might want to grab that staple gun. Just saying. Yeah, that would probably be a really good idea here because there's a lot of hardware already out. Last thing we need is a staple gun. I didn't get the memo on the exact rules. Of the Cracker it, Barrel Challenge. You guys with the, the, the Cracker Barrel Clash, it's just pinfall, first man to a pinfall or submission. Anything goes. There is quite a bit of hardware, as you said, Goldie, around the ring. And now Jimmy Havoc in the chair as Darby Allen and Joey Janela looking to take advantage of him. Darby Allen all the way across looking for something. This match can be held in an, an asylum. This is as easy as a wrestling Oh, ring. look at this. Darby Allen with a with a cup. What is that? He's got some he's got some gaffers tape. After now tape. Look at this what? using the gaffers tape to tape Jimmy Havoc to the chair. Makes sense to tape down the craziest person in this match. Then again, I don't even know if that's true because uh, yeah, Joey allegedly Janelle exists. These boys have been reading too much Stephen oh, King. Let me tell you, Jimmy Havoc travel. Oh. Just get that bicycle kick to the face, and now Darby. Is that caught. Oh, that's rattling. Is that jingling. Oh, oh no, no 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 no! Our thumbtacks in there. No, what are you doing, Darby? No, putting oh, thumbtacks in God. the mouth 
of Jimmy Havoc and oh, oh no! They're taping the mouth of Jimmy Havoc closed. You only got to swallow that one. Gaffer to, oh, just for a punctured stomach, punctured intestine, anything. And those thumbtacks are in his mouth, and the, the alliance is over. And now, yeah, effectively, we have a singles match, which could be the smartest thing by either man. Darby goes to the outside, flipping over that lariat attempt on the ankles, and oh, the tope suicida just shot out of a cannon with Darby Allen sending Joey Janela spine first into the railing. He'll fly through those ropes like no other man, I tell you. Janela, though, no slouch in the speed department as well, but Darby just a half step quicker. Now, Darby going up to the top, that beautiful arm drag he loves to employ. Janela swinging a miss again into the stunner goes Darby Allen. And Jimmy Havoc still trapped on the outside with a mouthful attack. You think someone might have the common courtesy to untake Jimmy Havoc. And now Darby, like people are he's asking? No, 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 no. Look at this. What are you gonna do? Jimmy, Jimmy Havoc has baited Darby. Oh! oh! My God. The worst part about all of that was that Jimmy Havoc was motioning to Darby Allen. He was asking Allen. for it. He was asking for it. Well, the fans chanting, holy shit. And I can imagine that's exactly what this kid's gonna say in about six or eight hours. And Darby, you can see with that right elbow. Oh, oh Janella! Well, it ain't gonna be pretty. Catching him unawares with that boot to the face and the chop across the throat. These guys love to beat the hell out of each other. They really and truly do. It's, I don't know if it's even about being pretty or winning, sound fundamental wrestling. It's about beating the hell out of each other and taking every chance Darby known to God. Looking for that coffin drop, but Janella cuts him off at the pass. And oh, we've mentioned him. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Joey, Janela, what? Oh! oh! Good Lord. Emerald Frozen Lord. on the apron. He is a bad, bad boy. And ladies and gentlemen, that apron is not to play with. It's not to be trifled with or wrestled on. And Janela now looking under the ring for some plunder of his own. That is just... Jimmy Havoc, I think... Oh, he's pulling on a tennis racket. What the hell is that? Paul Bunyan's tennis racket? Opting not to use the tennis racket. Who on earth would use that? And now Janela uh, pulling on a table. That seems like it's going to get the job done a little bit more effectively for what Joey Janela wants to do. He's going to need some space. Yeah, yeah. We, we, help, help, help him out there, guys. Help him out so he can beat somebody up with a, with a chair or table. <laughs> Good Lord. Really anything at this point. Yeah. And so we've talked about Darby Allen and his ability to just take basically anything that's thrown at him. It's not that he's impervious to pain. He's indifferent to it. He just doesn't care that he's in pain. And but for Jimmy oh, Havoc, about time. pain is life. And he takes, oh, oh, he spat out the thumbtacks and threw in the eyes of Janela. Right in the face, host first. Right the pain, pain is life. Life is pain for Jimmy Havoc. Oh, he faked with the chop. I poke. Havoc, the most experienced wrestler in this match. That's called the ship. Oh. <laughs> oh! Heard that one from all the way up here. And Havoc, despite his, uh, his scarred body, despite his appearance, is an extremely, extremely well-trained wrestler in the British catches catch can style. He just opts to use this style of wrestling. That's how sick in the head he is. I don't know if you guys oh. just saw, but he pulled out another Shoryuken. staple gun. Where does he keep getting these oh. from? And with the Shoryuken. Planted him center of the ring, hooks the leg. Let's hook, kick out. Bryce Remsburg saying it's only a two count. You mean the Bryce Remsburg? I very much so do. The one and only. And now, oh, no. oh, 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 God. Paper cut between the extended fingers of Joey Janela. Now I know to some that may not look like it hurts, but let me tell you, I've had a few paper cuts in my. That is painful. No, 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 oh. not between the webbings of the oh. fingers. Oh, that is just gruesome. <laughs> oh, that is gruesome. Oh, very manly, you know. And now the staple gun. Oh, oh. now that's serious. 
Monkey flip. Janela landed on the chair. <laughs> Janela mighty proud of his action. And that's with a staple in his forehead. No. Oh! JR, tell me that doesn't hurt. Uh, well, I've never tried it. It didn't look very comfortable to me. I don't think I've ever seen that in wrestling. Acid match Rainmaker before. countered. Janela, brain buster oh! on the chair. I've seen brain busters in the chair before, and that was one of them. Janela charging in Darby Allen. Oh! Who oh! folding him in half on that table with a flipping power bomb to the outside. Darby Allen got back into the match, and he's right back out of it. And if you notice it, Janela was very high on the shoulders. We'll see it here on the replay. Look how high on the shoulders he was. And so Darby went down on the back of his head. His shoulders didn't actually even collide with the table. So that was effectively a flipping pile driver from Joey Janela from inside the ring through a table to the floor. I got a feeling the doctors here at AEW have plenty of work to do when this match is over. And the fans here chanting Cracker Barrel as Joey Janela going up to the top turnbuckle. Oh, oh no! Oh Janela! What the hell is he thinking? You're that Jimmy thud? Havoc moved out of the way! You're that thud? Jimmy Havoc moved out of the way. Nobody was home. And his eyes are open, but nobody's home there either. Well. I don't know how much offense you're going to get with these fluffy biscuits. Those are the best biscuits in the world. I mean, you can use oh, the metal, though. Yeah, you can use the, the, the tray. And now Havoc pointing at the, the Cracker Barrel at the top of the ramp. No. That commemorative 50th anniversary barrel. Dragging it down the ramp. I'm sure there's some fried chicken in there, right? I mean, if it is, no. it if it breaks open, it wouldn't be all that bad. We need some. Well, folks, we have no idea what's... I've never seen a barrel used in a wrestling match before. First for me. I would say but, it's the first for me, too. This whole thing's basically a first for me. Pratt, here's, a, here's the newest T-shirt, folks. We want barrels. That's your local Cracker Barrel. A low blow there from Joey Janela. Bryce Remsburg will allow it. The, the first man to score a pinfall or submission is your victor. Obviously, no disqualifications in this match. <laughs> How is Joey Janela standing? How? And On running two feet, at but not for long. Oh, good running clothesline. Ten minutes gone by. Ten remain. Oh, Darby's got a skateboard. He was a professional skateboarder earlier in his life, and I say earlier. He's only 22 years of age. I thought about following that same path at one time. <laughs> Well, JR, while you're thinking about your skateboarding career, I tell you, I've seen a lot oh. of skateboards before. That does not look like one. No, look, look, oh, look at the bottom of that yeah. skateboard. It does not look it's, normal. It's covered in tacks. Oh, no. That, the bottom of that skateboard is covered in tacks, and J Jimmy Havoc went for a chop on the skateboard. Now, Darby. Ali! Oh! oh! Driving the tacks into the spine in the back. Oh, there they look are. At them. There's the proof. There's the cover. Two. The legs are hooked, and it's not over yet. Havoc pulls Darby out and sends him face first into the ring steps. Thanks for coming, Darby. Have a biscuit. And now sending him into the steps, that time shoulder first. Ridiculous stuff in this matchup. These men are hell-bent to use the table. I don't think, and I've been watching pro wrestling for a very long time. I don't think I've ever seen a person ollie onto the back of somebody with a skateboard Skateboard that is thumbtacks. That's a first. It's not usually. Oh, Darby! Oh. Right to the table. Well, the table got used. Darby just throwing his body off the apron with a little miniature coffee dro coffin drop right there. And now, oh, sending Havoc shoulder first into the steps. Those steps seen a lot of action this evening. What the hell is left? The Cracker Barrels. Yeah, at this point, oh. you might as well. Shame on you. Some say you throw the kitchen Havoc seat. Just just shooting staples at Darby Allen. Now, Darby grabbing Havoc and throwing him again into that, that step. I was going to say, sometimes, you know, they say you throw the kitchen sink at someone. This time around, throw the steel steps, throw the crack barrel, throw everything at him. Surprised we don't have a kitchen sink in this match. 
Not Would yet. not shock me if it was underneath there. Not yet, anyway. Hashtag AEW All Out trending worldwide. No. And why wouldn't it be? No. Oh. Darby. No. Darby Allen. Oh. No. Oh my God. No, 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 no. Set to DVRs, folks. Oh, Darby. What? No. Oh. Oh. Nobody was there. Nobody was there but the steps. A human being just put his own body, specifically his spine, to the Cracker Barrel. I am physically uncomfortable right now. Look at this. Oh. Look at this. Oh it's insanity. It's absolute insanity. God. He, he has to be out of it. Darby Allen may be effectively eliminated from this match and life itself. A lot of murmuring here in the arena. Trying to, the fans trying to figure out what the hell they just saw. Now, as am I. Havoc and Janela. The two men left standing in this match. Joey Janela. Oh, DDT planting Jimmy Havoc on the crown of his head. That's a devastating maneuver. One is followed up. Janela now going to think about going to the top with the exclamation point. Yeah. We okay. saw him use that picture perfect elbow drop off the top of the ladder on John Moxley. He could be thinking the same thing here on Jimmy Havoc. Well, Janela telling the Macho Man. Both legs are hooked, shoulders are down, and a kick out at two. One of many near falls we have witnessed in this insane contest. We have to be approaching oh. the 20 minute time limit here mm -mm. tonight. Mm -mm. Well, this Cracker Barrel clash, and now Janela bringing a, the second Cracker Barrel well, if you will, into he's, the ring. He's going to roll out the barrel. What's well, better than one Cracker Barrel? Two. Yes, right. And now placing the barrel on the chest of Jimmy Havoc. And Havoc's holding it. Havoc's holding it, but <laughs> I, I would argue that Havoc has something in mind. Yep. I he thought so. barrel rolls. Nice uppercut form. It's with another uppercut. And there's a barrel on the loose, ladies and gentlemen. A barrel's on the loose. Oh, they... no. Uh, oh. Super flex the legs of Joey Janela going through the barrel. Well, that... He's going to make sure it's all used, gentlemen. That left leg was smashed. Acid oh. rain maker onto the barrel. One, two, three. Oh, that's it. That's here for Jimmy. Jimmy Havoc. He endured a hell of a lot. No winner of this match. his hand raised, I can tell you that. Jimmy Havoc. You know what Jimmy Havoc did? He avoided the most punishment. He moved out of the way of that moonsault off the top of Joey Janela. He moved out of the way of that coffin drop by Darby Allen. Jimmy Havoc using his experience, using his head in a match where... I, I'm wondering how many tacks he swallowed. Let's yeah. get down to brass tacks here, fellas, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, oh, that was just well, Golden Boy. Would you say that was a memorable match? You know, I, I, if there's one thing that Cracker Barrel is good for, it's making memories. Wow, what a match that was! Jimmy Havoc still coughing up thumbtacks. We're gonna take a look at some of the action, but before we do that, we're gonna see some of the. The Sunday fried chicken dinner that's available there at Cracker Barrel mm. uh, every day of the week. And Darby, they're just risking life and limb repeatedly. Well, they spit here in this match were not chicken at all in any shape, form, or fashion. JR, you've oh, seen. Look at this. Oh. But the monkey goes great counter there by Janella. But. Oh! That just almost Canadian destroyer style. Power bomb through the table on the floor. It's a wonder that oh. any of these men can move. Insanity. Absolute Matt insanity. And when you see it all played oh. one after another after another, you have to be concerned about all three of the men that participated in this I, matchup. I hope I'm wrong, but I predict that none of these men will ever compete in an over 50 battle royal. They're not going to make it that long. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I remember when this company first started, I saw men calling for change. One man in particular called for a paradigm shift. I'm the guy who's going to be leading this company for the next 25 years. John Moxley, 
I am challenging you for your world title. I'll see you at All Out, John. All Elite Wrestling presents All Live, live Saturday, September 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on pay-per-view. Now kids big and small can relive their favorite AEW moments at home with the brand new Unrivaled Collection by Jazzware. The chief brandy officer is here, repping the ladies. AEW Unrivaled, available now exclusively at Walmart. And the AEW faithful representing strong. I think here. all these hand signals that we're seeing in the crowd should be uh, close captioned so we know what the other saying. They're saying <laughs> AEW. I got that <laughs> The hand signals. The hand signals. Don't talk. They're not saying anything. And coming up next, as a great theologian once said, now for something completely different. <laughs> the match to determine the team that gets the bye in the first round of the AEW World Tag Team Title Tournament. The best friends taking on the Dark Order. Certainly not a randomly booked or promoted tag team matchup. Not at all. Because uh, that buy is a big deal. Earning the buy in the tournament is going to be a huge part of our broadcast, our initial broadcast, especially on TNT. Can you imagine TNT, a home of the NBA, and AEW live every single Wednesday night, folks? I can't wait. This is a tag team match set for one fall. Introducing first from the key. At a combined weight of 439 pounds, Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, the Dark Order. And we've seen the Dark Order in action, and we've seen the Creepers in action, and how the Dark Order has used them effectively to target the team that is at the top of their hit list here in AEW, but, the best friends. But how do we know that those are the original Creepers? Well, I thought you checked their IDs backstage. No. I did, but not, I, that I stayed that, far that, away from them. So that, I, that, one, that one guy, he just looked like he just left the home. <laughs> Evil Uno and the man that was born and bred for combat, Stu Grayson. Evil Uno, of course, with the mask, Stu Grayson without. They are one of the most formidable tag teams in all of professional wrestling, and they will be taking on a team that are two of the biggest fan favorites in professional wrestling. Chuck Taylor and Trent, the best friends. Oh, this is, that's a hallmark moment right there if I've ever seen one. Well, Mark's pushing it a little bit. Yeah, but. what a holiday card. <laughs> Especially around Thanksgiving. Or Halloween, more specifically. <laughs> And their opponents, at a combined weight of 418 pounds, Trent, Chuck Taylor, best friends. Well, JR, it's been a night of firsts, and it will continue to be a night of firsts. But after this match, we will know the first team to advance to the next round of the AEW World Tag Team Championship title tournament. And the, you know, I'm excited for the fact that AEW is doing everything they can to really promote tag team wrestling. It's a building process. It is a process, ladies and gentlemen, as this the entire uh, program. We're gonna evolve and grow every single week. But I like the commitment, made long-term commitment to tag team wrestling here in our company. It helps when one of the foundational pieces of this company is perhaps the best tag team in the world in the Young Bucks. Yeah, and not to, not to forget as well, at the bye, we saw Private Party, another team that just looks amazing in AEW. This is certainly going to be a stacked division, and that tournament will be a joy to watch. It'll be a lot of fun to watch every Wednesday night live as it happens. And as you mentioned, JR, the, uh, the Dark Order has been, uh, been creeping around AEW and targeting the best friends. Now the best friends have a chance for some comeuppance as Chuck Taylor ducks under that wild lariat there from Stu Grayson and now lays in some elbow strikes, but Grayson muscles him over to the corner and tags out immediately to Evil Uno. Grayson's got quite the MMA mixed martial arts background. He's 
been studying the arts, martial arts, since he was six years old. Very much so why he is born and bred for combat. Chuck Taylor, though, used to fighting from behind, fighting from underneath, and now fending off both members of the Dark Order. Uno there gaining the upper hand. Trent, though, with the blind tag. Comes in, and now just a Donnybrook breaking out center of the ring. The old Donnybrook, ladies and gentlemen. Uno shoves off Trent. Little misdirection there by the best friends. Taking the Dark Order to the outside. There we go! And the crowd loves it. Everybody loves a good hug. I think when fans see that in our arenas, they should turn the person next to them and hug them. I'll put that in the suggestion box. All right, Jared, let's go. Let's go for the hug right now. You ready? All right. Whip it to the ropes. Chuck Taylor, beautiful drop kick, taking the big man, Evil Uno, off of his feet. Well, you want that big man on his back. You got him there. Now the question is, can he keep him down for three seconds? There's the hook of the leg, far side. Probably not this time, and it wasn't. Rick Knox only with the two count there is Evil Uno able to kick out. And Uno retreating to the safety of the ropes. And now looking for the tag out to Stu Grayson, perhaps? Yes. I like the fact that uh, Trent is wearing the world's toughest bandana. <laughs> it has not moved in competition. That's a tough bandana, kids. You won't see it move either. And you for see the, it the whole time. For the first time ever, a spooky perverts chant has broken out in the professional <laughs> wrestling world. That uh, is how the best friends describe. And that's the another T-shirt for the night, my man. <laughs> the spooky perverts. Just turning them out here. Grayson though shoving off Trent and Uno though with the blindside attack. Trent turns his back there to Grayson, but catches him with the back elbow. Yeah. Sweep of the leg. You gotta have your eyes in the back of your head in some of these situations. The Dark Order doing a great job of keeping the pressure up on Trent. And now shoulder to the midsection. Trent doing a great job though of fighting off. Uh oh, look at evil oh. Uno there. Uno grabbing the ankle and the truck yeah. extending oh. Trent into the barricade. Great read there by the Dark Order. These two work so well together. Evil Uno calling the shots and he can always rely on Stu Grayson to come up big when he needs him to. Right now, the uh, advantage is on the with our, with our mass man. Evil Uno Evil taking the, control of Trent. He's a big dude, man. He's a 300 pounder, I'm thinking. And there we see that guillotine elbow drop there from Grayson. Cover. Putting Trent in perfect position for a pin, but Trent able to kick out. A 300 pound man puts a different connotation and meaning on a lateral press. Oh, very much so. About the body weight, body on body. But he's, he's waiting for a TV timeout, big fella. There aren't any. Oh! Thunderous chop to the chest, and now places that big boot across the throat of Trent Rick Knox, calling for the break. Chuck Taylor. Oh, just stern him first into that top rope. Chuck Taylor doing a good job of not coming into the ring to distract Knox to allow more punishment on his partner, but there comes a breaking point. That, stern, that sternum first shot reminds me of the great Brett, the hitman heart. And sometimes he would take a ride to the turnbuckle that was just chill, chills up your spine. The impact was immense. Shovel hook there from Trent, trying to fight over to his corner. But Grayson doing a great job of preventing the tag, keeping him in oh, oh, opposition territory. Springboard right off the top rope. No opportunities, no moments that the Dark Order is providing for Trent to be able to get to the other side, get to his teammate, get to his best friend. And now Grayson up okay. oh, here. Over the top. Beautiful sent on Atomico over the top. And the Dark Order are just in complete control of the best friends. Dark Order not too popular here in Chicago. Look, cover near fall. It, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I'm thinking the uh, the Dark Order could should have put this thing away. They had much, chances. You know what I mean? I, I, maybe I'm had wrong. A few here. opportunities. They've yeah. had those moments, those openings. It's like they have it under such firm control that they're willing to extend the match because they know they're going to win. Very much seems like that. It seems like they're enjoying inflicting punishment yeah. on Trent. That's it. I mean, there's but, a different I mean, motive there. But there's a world championship title at stake potentially. Oh, Trent going over. And, and winners pay. You know, that's not very much that aspect so. of it. There is. The, oh, Trent with a wild swing on that lariat, taking Grayson off his feet. 
And there you go, the moment that he was looking for. Can Trent get to his buddy, Chuck Taylor, right at the other side of the ring here? Grayson makes the tag out to Uno, but Uno grabbing the ankle of Trent, preventing Trent from making the tag and dragging him all the way back to the opposing yeah, corner. Smart wrestling, quite frankly, to pull your opponent into your corner, your half of the ring, your territory, whatever uh, analogy you want to use. And then the double team is so convenient because you can stomp to four and get out before five and not get disqualified. That's why you want to isolate your opponent in a tag team match in your half of the ring. It's all about the geography. Cutting the ring in the half right across the hypotenuse. The Dark Order doing a great job of it. The Chicago faithful here not happy about seeing the best friends get brutalized, but the Dark Order putting on a tag team clinic. Well, up until then. Wow. Grayson sent high up and over the. Yeah, his face first into the apron. Again, those aprons are hard. Uh, they're not padded. There's nothing there to And help Trent out. finally, no, he didn't. Chuck Taylor pulled off the apron by Stu Grayson. That was pretty smart wrestling. It wasn't very ethical, but it was very smart. And this could be the opportunity they need. Yeah, isolation and finishing. Isolation oh. and finishing. And Z-Gary, brain buster combination. Grayson with the cover hook and a leg. One. No. Come on. Leading with Rick Knox. Yeah, and he should be looking in the mirror. That should have been a much snugger cover. A tight hook of the leg. I want him to die! Grayson saying he wants Trent to die. That's, that's an HR issue. Now Evil Uno. Here's the big guy, Rumble. Charging into the corner, oh. back elbow, nobody home. Yes. Trent swinging oh. DDT! Wow, that's a nice, nicely done. Trent uh, Beretta was really smart in how he made a counter when it looked like he was done. And using the big man's body weight against him to plant him down hard on the top of his head, creating some distance. Tag. And now, Blind makes tag. the leap up to Chuck Taylor. And Knox is legal. Knox and Taylor. It looks like the Chuck Taylor All-Stars right here. Chuck Taylor going around. Standing slice bread. Pop. Dog. Yeah, what a One, two, Power. no. Powerbomb got a near fall. Sexy Chucky e. T feeling a vibe here on the all the Sears Center Arena. And Grayson sent up and over the top. Golden Boy, both members of the Dark Order on the outside. Over the top. And Chuck Taylor taking the skies, making it look easy. Very easy, very athletic is Chuck Taylor. Getting a full head of steam here, the big old running head start. Chuck Taylor now basically face, facing the Dark Order in a handicap match as Trent on the outside needing to recover. Leaving the ring might not have been Chuck's the best option as it turns out here. Yeah, he's because gonna, he, he finds himself in a two, he put himself in a one on two situation. Yeah, the, the numbers overwhelming, but actually slipping up and over the top. Oh, telegraphed that. Went for the, uh, the back body drop, tagging that blind tag out there. Trent back Trent. on the corner, or back on the apron, I'm sorry. And, and got the tag, he's legal. Now back into the ring with that back elbow. Sending Grayson into the waiting arms. Oh. German suplex by Trent. Beautiful tag team combination but, wrestling by the best friends. But Trent could not follow up. He hits a great move. He drills a man with a suplex, but he can't follow up. Think Those, about how much punishment he's endured in this match. I agree now with the launch into the ace crusher. Hook of the leg. One, two, no. There'll be another name for that hole next week, folks. It will not be the ace crusher again. <laughs> I'm boycotting. Tag out to Trent now. The best friends entering their comfort zone of tag team wrestling. Uh -oh. Now the double team is back. Up. This is where you went for the. the, the there's a lost shot. opportunity. Oh! Dark Water gets a, dark, a, a lost opportunity. Check on by their name. Now Grayson tagging out to Evil Uno. Bandera up and over the top. Grayson to the outside, shoving Trent into the pump kick there from Evil Uno. Now Uno. Excuse me, Grayson! Oh, oh, look at the beautiful Tornillo! Ah. To the outside, he took out Chuck Taylor. Look at and the top. The Creepers. Oh! 
Lord. Cannonball big, sent on. Big Look at the man leg. off the top. No! Trent kicks out. Well, you know, when you have a lax cover, no matter how big your eyes are, I can't believe it either. You turn on your stomach, go belt it chest to chest, hook a leg, you got to win. Or you cannot. And the match continues. But now, the control, though, is still going to be for the Dark Order. Oh, slapping him around. The disrespect from the Dark Order. And the high knee. knee. And the. Oh! oh. That scorpion style belly to belly combination from the Dark Order. And we saw them use this in Jacksonville. The Sent on 450 combination. Oh, wow. Cover some ground there. Look at the leg one. Could do two. It. No, Trent kicks out again. The resilience of Trent has been so impressive throughout this match in the Dark Order, they are beside themselves. They need to put him away right now. Second time that Stu has not covered shoulders and then looked surprised when he didn't get the pinfall. It's gonna be that way most of the time unless you knock somebody's ass out. And now looking for the fatality. This is how they won their debut at Fight for the Fallen. But uh -oh. Chuck Taylor shoving Grayson off. The Roll up, one, two, no! Well, that was very close. Thought the big mass man completely off guard or seemed out of, like a big fish out of water on that one. Toe kick to the belly button there by Evil Uno on Trent. Trent oh. sends him in. Sexy Chucky knee! Grayson swinging a miss. Soul food! Half and half combination there by the best friends! Best friends feel they got this in the bag, and they may well be right. And now Trent tagging back in. Best friends looking to go to work on Evil Uno. Trent taking a moment to collect himself. Maybe, oh, looking for strong zero. Ooh, that's going to be very difficult against no. Evil Uno. He's going to have that weight advantage there. Oh. He's a load. He just but it, fired Trent, uh, Trent right up to the turnbuckle. Tag made. Yeah, Trent could have a crack rip from all that punishment. Stu Grayson tag. He'll be the legal man with Chuck Taylor. Whoa. Springs down. Chuck. Awful. Whoa. Chuck Taylor plants Grayson. But Trent's got to get the cover. He's got to get the cover. Grayson's out. Arm Sue's over. favorite son. One, two. No. Oh, wow. He got pulled out by Evil Uno. That Evil. looked like it was going to be it. But Evil Uno. Oh, now look at this. The Creepers. Oh, they ran. Creepers overwhelming. Ran up the house is on fire. Turn around. Oh, great. It's not every day you're going to get senior official Rick Knox caught off guard here. And the Dark Order did just that. And that just goes to show how well the Dark Order excel at using those duplicitous tactics. One pair of eyes can't be looking everywhere, as proven by that last 30 seconds or so. And now Trent up on the shoulders, probably all academic from here, looking for the fatality and looking to advance. Fatality! Getting that first round by one, two, three. That is it. Man, well, Evil Uno. The winners of this match, the Dark Order. Acting as if it was all a matter of uh, time, and maybe it was, but there are opportunities there for the best friends to win this match because they are a very good team. They're one of the top teams, but they were not able to overcome the numbers game. Yes, they were facing two opponents, but those two opponents had eight creepers waiting underneath the ring, waiting to come out at All the right, right moment. Hey, and hey, now hey. Grayson, unnecessary. Just again, keeping the attack up. The crowd here in Chicago, incensed by the Dark Order's victory. The and Dark now, Order, man. This again, it, it just comes down to it. Something you don't want to see. At the end of the match, it's over. The bell's been rung. No what? Now, hearkening back to some some druids we saw here about a year ago. Drek. Uh oh, what? Usually, this is a page out of the Dark Order's playbook. Squeezed, orange 
Orange Cassidy has been poured into the All Elite Wrestling Ring. He's running. Tope Suicida with the hands in his pockets. Taking out all the creepers. Jeepers. That's pretty cool. Makes it look so easy. His hands have been in his pocket the entire time. He takes out four people, hands still in his pocket. How do we know the bottoms aren't cut out of his pockets? We don't know that. You don't know that. I don't. I don't. I never prided myself as being a journalist, JR. I'm a detective. <laughs> so nice. Well, just when it looked dire just, for the best friends. Who is this guy? That's Orange Cassidy. I know that, but who is he? He is a training partner of Chuck Taylor from Pennsylvania. He's a man that Chuck Taylor and Trent know extremely well. I guess that's one way to get a hug out of Orange Cassidy. Mr. Laissez Faire. Bon vivant. And for as nonchalant as he seems, Orange Cassidy, an extremely gifted professional wrestler, a Lucha Libre style wrestler. And when he chooses to use those abilities, he is dangerous. And now it looks like the best friends just got some backup, Golden Boy. Yeah, well, hey, you couldn't have asked for a better time, too. It seemed like the Creepers were gonna drag Trent out of the arena. Thankfully, Orange Cassidy came in for the save. Thumbs up, thumbs up all around here at the Sears Center. I would like to be heard. I'd like to feel included. I'd like to feel respected. I would love a sense of community. I'd like to be taken seriously. I'd like to just be myself. I want to know that I matter, that my thoughts, my perspective, my ideas, my creativity, my happiness, I want to know that it matters. I'd like to do more than just watch. I'd like to actually contribute. I'd like to be part of a movement. I'd like for everyone to feel confident in their own heels. Well, JR, AEW is going to debut on TNT October 2nd, and also on October 2nd, we will have the first ever All Elite Wrestling Women's World Champion crowned, and it will be either Nyla Rose or one of these two women. Nyla Rose is in, right? Nyla Rose in She's by in. virtue of winning the right. Casino Battle Royale. And one of these two ladies will be challenging Nyla Rose. And by the way, in Nyla's hometown in uh, Washington, D.C., to become the first ever women's, the AEW Women's Champion. There's a beautiful This contest belt. is set for one fall, with the winner facing Nyla Rose for the AEW Women's Championship, October 2nd on TNT. You just said that. Approaching the ring first, from Kanagawa, Japan, Hikaru. Shida! Hikaru Shida, student of Emi Sakura, pinning Emi Sakura in their trios match at Double or Nothing in Las Vegas, Nevada. She surpassed her mentor, which in the dojo culture in Japan is something that is extremely, extremely significant. And Hikaru Shida looking to keep up that momentum here tonight against Riho, a woman that she knows extremely well, a woman that she is the senior of. But Riho has been on a tear here in AEW. Will Shida be able to derail her momentum? Well, folks, here's a great stat for you. Rio is 22 years of age. That young lady right there. And her opponent from Shingawa City, Japan, Rio. And she's been wrestling 13 years. Now you can do that math very easily. That's <laughs> right. Started since she was nine years old, for some of our viewers who are like me and don't do math very well. 
So that is a long time she's been in the squared circle, but most importantly, at such a young age, can you imagine the amount of experience and all that she has soaked in in her time in professional wrestling, JR? Unreal. It is. Great commitment. That's commitment, folks. A pro wrestling prodigy, Riho, of course, also a student of Emi Sakura. And Riho on the team that won it all out, or excuse me, at double or nothing in it's Las Vegas. But Hikaru Shida was the woman that scored the pinfall. And we are just moments away from finding out who will face Nyla Rose in Washington, D.C. on October 2nd. Well, speaking of Nyla Rose, let's not forget that at Fighter Fest, it was Riho who scored the big pin over Nyla Rose in a matchup that was honestly so not in her favor. And yet somehow, someway, through sheer grit, she managed to get the better of the native beast. And now she's looking to have a rematch yet again, if that's the case. But she does as hard hitting as they come. Riho's got to be careful. Now Riho takes the waist lock, as does Hikaru Shida. Shida Brings her up, pulls her into a front chancery. Riho rolls out, takes a front chancery of her own. Riho's got to use her speed and quickness or it's over. She's 98 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. That's not hard to figure that Shoulder one out. Shoulder tackle, yeah, and Sheeta using her size advantage. Yes, tackles are, 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 are impressive. They work, body slams. Went for the arm drag. Well, well Sheeta. the arm drag. You called the JR. You said you had to watch out for that, but there's the speed and quickness yeah. from Rio just rolling out of there. Went for that body press, but the cutter Sheeta catches her into the backbreaker, lateral press, two count. Riho bridging up to her feet, charging into the ropes, drop kick takes Hikaru Shida off of her feet. Crowd enjoying the athleticism and the competitive nature of this matchup. And the thing about these ladies, they start so young that become, the wrestling becomes their life, really becomes their life, and they're so fundamentally sound. These, these ladies have got years ahead of them, and they're already good. So oh, they're just getting better here with this competition. Leaping knee strike, and you're exactly right, JR. Riho's life has been pro wrestling. That's actually how Kenny Omega met her, competing in DDT years and years ago. Riho, as we like to mention, always Kenny Omega's preferred intergender tag team partner. But Hikaru Shida with that knee lift. Shades of the great wrestling two, Johnny Walker, oh. with that running knee lift. Anything she but the seven fingers. She probably doesn't have a damn clue who Johnny Walker is, but nonetheless, <laughs> he was a pretty damn good one. Well, the interesting thing about Hikaru Shida is that not only is she an extremely talented professional wrestler, she's also a singer and stage actress in Japan, but she is uprooting her life, moving to the United cover, States. Cover here. We had two count there from referee Paul Turner. And Hikaru Shida just stomping. The, the the kidneys there of Riho. But she, as I mentioned, uprooting her life, moving to the United States this October, Good having change. her farewell appearance in Japan. What, what a farewell it would be to come back to Japan as the reigning defending AEW Women's World Champion. I love the spirit of Riho. Here we go. Oh, one of these two women will be the champion the and first ever there's a title belt that's what these two women are fighting for they're fighting for a chance at nyla rose fighting for a chance to be crowned the first ever oh look at this boston crab just oh, arching arch. back yeah that is just dreadful to see right pulling on the legs pulling the well, back oh that hurts it, it is but the thing about it being 98 oh, pounds single leg crab. she's got a little bit more flexibility than some someone larger that's the only salvation i can think of in this predicament because the longer that uh, Rio sits in this, this hole and she's being punished, the chance of her winning decrease by the second. Yeah, stretching out those ligaments of the knees. You're exactly you right, Golden Boy. Her, it. it inhibits her mobility, her speed, and her agility, her two greatest assets. When you but, factor Adam into the fact that Sheeta not only has the speed, but also has that strength advantage over Rio, the match quickly turns in her favor. Nala Rose is the lady that won the Battle Royal. And uh, she will be in her hometown, the biggest match of her life against one of these two women. Oh, look at and this. And somebody will Hanging leave. backbreaker. Somebody will leave D.C. as the first champion. Look at the grotesque angle as Riho is bent over the back or over the shoulder this of should, This should be a matter of time. Well, that's what we thought 
when she was facing Nyla Rose, but Rio Ooh. proved that she's going to be resilient, but maybe, I mean, oh, oh look at this, yeah. She got jerked around like a rag doll. And the shoulders are down. Oh, she bridged out of it. She squirted out of that pretty uh, tentatively. Great heart, great fight yeah. left in Riho. Credit to Sheeta, though, the way that she just put all of her body weight right onto the chest of Riho, not allowing her to breathe. So it took that much more energy for her to get out of that pin. And as I mentioned earlier, both of these women, students of Emi Sakura, they met many times in singles competition in Ice Ribbon, but they have not. Oh, look at this! The Tierras sending Hikaru Shida for a loop. Riho has a window of opportunity. They have not had a singles match in a number of years. So this is a meeting years in the making as Shida spills over the top rope. Riho low bridges her. And Riho thinking, I gotta end this now with something big. What's the biggest thing I can do? Oh, but Hikaru Shida up to her feet. Thinking, oh no. Uh oh. Right onto the outside. Oh, no. Now, that could be it. Yeah. Riho's really holding on with everything she has. She knows that if she gets put into that predicament, it could be a wrap. That elbow strike knocking Sheeta down. And now Riho. Driving oh! foot stomps. Driving all 98 pounds of her body weight into the midsection of Hikaru Shida, and Shida just being driven into that ring apron. The little lady is full of fight, ladies and gentlemen, no doubt about it. But can she overcome that size disadvantage to beat a very talented opponent? This is gonna be the constant problem that Riho faces in AEW. Pretty much a majority of the locker room is gonna have that size oh, and weight cross advantage. Body press. Cross body. No! Two count is she able to kick out. So Rio's gonna get, have to get very crafty if she wants to keep her winning ways in AEW. Oh, peppering her with that elbow. Wow. Swing. Man. Yeah, big but time. Sheeta. Oh! But she didn't duck that one. Now Sheeta hits the ropes, charging into Rio. Drop to a hold. Uh oh. What's the, what's the area code in Tokyo? I think it's gonna be. Oh, no, not blocked. today. Blocked. That's the experience these two women have against one another. And now Sheeta looking for the stretch muffler, Re trying to pull her. The referee's got to break the hold. She was oh. in the ropes. And now there's got to be separation. Pulling her in, but she doesn't have that knee flexed. Oh, oh there it is. Just wrenching down on that knee. Oh, but she's very close to the ropes. She's got to push herself, pull herself more so. Ah, that stretch muffler. Center. Oh. Riho, though, rolls her up. One, two. Oh! oh my God, I, I gotta think that's gonna be a big upset. I really do. She had a very high stack on that roll up. Riho flips through. Sheeta hits the ropes. Rio, a step quicker. Kazadora rolls her up again. Stop! Oh, that made. The little woman is doing some business here. Oh. oh, rising knee strike. Catching her under the jaw, rising up, causing her teeth to chatter. But the thing about this deal is the fact that what chance do either of them have, realistically, against Nyla Rose? If they're going to be the underdog, I don't give a damn who wins this match. I, but, because they're both talented, but Nyla Rose is really extraordinary as we saw tonight. That's a good point, JR. But remember, Riho did manage to defeat Nyla Rose. She was the one who was pinned at Fighter Fest. And Sheeta, while well, Sheeta has all the capability of, in the world to be able to upset someone like Nyla Rose, I know you said, you know, they're so talented, but let's not forget, we shouldn't underestimate these two incredible wrestlers. Oh, I'm not, by any stretch of the imagination. You're talking about a 200-something pounder against a 98-pounder. You do that, man. She's looking for a brain buster, but Riho kicking her feet. Sheeta, though, what strength. She's holding her all up and just deadlifts her oh. back up and over the top. Outpowered, out more mass, more strength. Golden Boy, you mentioned Riho defeating Nyla Rose in that three-way match. But, oh, blocks the knee strike, does Riho. Smart, but getting it that one done. Now Sheeta hits the ropes, another block, but that time, Sheeta powers through it, one, two. No, Riho kicks out. She'd need her right through the guard. Unfeathered. But Golden Boy, that pin that Riho scored over Nyla Rose 
it was a surprise pin. That's I don't true. think Nyla gets caught sleeping twice. That's true. It, it, and Nyla Rose is looking at this matchup with intent. She is studying each and every moment because she knows that she's going to have to deal with the speed. That's the worst part about it because Nyla Rose, she's going to have that strength. But she won't be able to have that speed advantage over these two women. And because of that, you have to look at every single moment and you have to break it down. And that is certainly what Nyla Rose is going to be doing because she is one step she closer does. for being the champion. Real closer, real closer closer behind. Inside cradle, hook of the leg, one, two. No, she reverses. Reverse with power and strength. Hangs on. And look at this. Again. Extraordinary strength and power. Sets her out on the apron. Oh. Step up, Enzi Gurry. Well, wow. right in the temple. Knocking her down to the apron. And now Hikaru Shida pulling a very dazed Riho, trying to pull her up to her feet. And now maybe looking to bring her in oh. the hardest way possible. Oh. Welcome back to the ring, Riho. Leg hooked, shoulders down. Oh! Riho able to get the shoulder up. She'd have thought she had it. She should have had it. She should have had it. But a lax cover didn't get it done. That's all that, that's pulled down to that. It's almost like she put too much leverage yeah. on the shoulder by pu pulling that leg back. Not concentrating. We saw that poor Kenny Omega Knight had a hell of a match, but his head wasn't in it. I don't know that now you, this, Riho's just held on, held on and held on. The lady maybe is thinking, oh, look. I cannot beat her. And she does not, she's she, had the advantage. I just don't, I don't get the finish here. I think Riho just so tenacious. She's got so much heart, so much fighting spirit. Oh, I love that. But look at this, Sheeta. No, nope. oh, no, yeah. versus into the Northern Lights suplex. She got underneath. Use that low fulcrum. Yep. And using that, that Northern Lights, one of her signature moves. Nice balance, good leverage, more importantly by this young lady who's got a, a heart that's bigger than her weight, that's for sure. I don't know that's going to hard to believe. <laughs> bigger to see, folks, come on. Help a brother out. But the longer that this match goes, Riho has proven time and time again that she is Ooh. so resilient in that ring. Uh oh. Sheeta needs to be careful, hold oh, it on. She, she swept out the legs of Sheeta. Open opportunity here. Oh, oh, good Lord. Good Lord, what impact and resilience. Just a javelin through the chest of Hikaru Shida. She's gone back to the well on that one time and time again. And each moment that she does, she takes advantage of the Oh, the knees! Double knees! One, two! Oh, Hikaru Shida kicks out! Yeah, we, we don't want to kill this point, but a little more body weight for the 98 pounder. She just don't have it. She has to be intelligent about how she positions her exactly, body weight. Exactly, exactly. And that was just instinctive, and she just wasn't big enough to close the deal on that exchange. But that's not over. Now look for the diving foot stomps. Sheeta, though, rolls through. Oh. Riho, though, knees to the back of the head. Sheeta on roller skates. Riho hits the ropes, comes charging in. Oh! Man, what if, look what at Ponze. Now up on the shoulders. Got her Sheeta oh. into the back breaker. Back breaker. Back cover. The bait walk, bait walk. No! Yeah. Riho again Good kicks Lord. out. Man, she had body on body. The leg was neutralized. And the little lady still kicks out. You gotta hand to Rio for God dang for her courage. That's right. But the way that her back bend on that one looked very painful. Oh, look at this, Rio. Counters one, two. Down. No. Sheeta able to kick out once again. Rio goes under. This is how she beat Nyla Rose, but Sheeta had it scouted. Oh, the knee strike. No. Countered once again by Rio. Rio charging in, ducks under the Lariat attempt. Crucifix goes around. Into a pin, high stack, one, two, On shoulder, that's it! Are you kidding? Are you kidding? And Riho. again, oh, and Riho. match. Riho! She did it again. Overcoming the odds is Riho in October 2nd, Washington, D.C. The native beast, Nyla Rose, will take on Riho to crown the first ever AEW Women's World Champion. And look at this, Hikaru Shida disconsolate. The disillusionment to the broken heart of Hikaru Shida. Uh-oh. And there is uh, the lady we've been talking about. Nyla Rose against the 
98 pound phenom. And Nyla looking, licking her lips like, I just see my supper. I think about this, Nyla Rose, not only is she looking forward to becoming the first ever AEW Women's World Champion, she's looking for a measure of revenge on Riho for getting rolled up in Daytona Beach. And Riho, though, not backing down. There is a frozen rope, an icy glare between these two women who will meet for that belt. That's what it's all about, folks, the AEW Women's Championship. But what a matchup we saw, moment after moment. This was Hikaru Shida in control. Riho just struggled to be able to stay in this match. But once again, Riho shows us that resiliency that has she become known for here in the States when she fights. And every time she steps into the ring at AEW, we're constantly impressed by how she manages to keep herself in the game. Gotta love this one, young woman's heart, her courage, and folks, she never, ever gave up in this fight where she was certainly outmanned, so to speak. A tremendous victory catching Hikaru Shida by surprise. The event that started it all. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a super card here. Has become the most anticipated pay-per-view of the year. Unbelievable! On Saturday, September 5th, the greatest champions in the sport today Whoa! will face the next generation of contenders. The biggest card of the year, without a doubt. All the League Wrestling presents All Live, live Saturday, September 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on pay-per-view.